Hi boys, today I am doing an analysis of Translucent Jade by Maureen Ten. The first line, my grandfather made me a gift when I was born, shows a sort of ambiguity. The gift is not named. What is the gift? An object is suggested with made. I used it for a while until another gift, my mother's, flashed into view. Common in its place of origin. There's this contrast between the origin and the exotic. There's also oral imagery here and personification. The gift sparkled and sang, replaced the other. The sibilance here, but it sort of slipped away, emphasises this physicality of the gift. The last line. No one seemed to mind if they noticed, as it lay in disuse and was quite forgotten, has this interrupting clause, if they noticed. And there's enjambment here as well, and it sounds like the poet is justifying or explaining the loss of the gift. Perhaps this is like a teenager, the way that teenagers feel the need to justify things. So she's looking back on those years and justifying it the way that teenagers do. In the second stanza, the gift is retrieved. There's this time signifier of today. It shows that um, it shows that we don't know how much time has passed, and there's also this maturity that comes across here. There's this extended metaphor of the name as an object, so barely, rarely used, it seemed mostly new, pristine, I tried it on, trying on the name as if the name were a piece of clothing. There's this accumulation of adverbs here, barely, rarely, mostly, that emphasises the newness of the gift. There's a simile here. As if from a world I hadn't inhabited, but had heard stories about. It shows these mysterious qualities of the name and of the heritage associated with the name. Here we have sometimes I felt like an imposter, sometimes I thought it reflected hidden aspects I could own. This is reflecting on the past, and there's also this negative connotation of the word imposter. So she feels disconnected from her culture. She feels that when she's trying this name on, that she doesn't, um, she doesn't relate to it. She feels disconnected from it, disconnected from her heritage as well as from her name. In the third stanza, we have these rhetorical questions. So we have this extended metaphor of sound carrying through and remember that sound is one of the virtues of Jade. This shows how unfamiliar she is with the foreign sound of her name. There's a syntactical inversion here. Does this belong to me? Do I to it belong? Instead of do, do I belong to it? Explores the difficulties faced when you don't identify with part of your culture, part of your heritage. Maureen Ten does not identify with her Chinese name or is trying to identify it with it and this shows the struggles that she's faced in doing that. Thank you for listening.